Harriman, but then again, forget that. Second down and five. Here's Collins back to pass again. Going deep downfield. Oh, my gosh. He didn't catch that, did he? That was incredible. That was an amazing interception. Watch it again. Oh, I'll tell you what, that was sweet. I use almost any excuse to see a football game. And today's excuse is that we're going to talk about graphing linear equations in slope intercept form. And since the word intercept was in there, I thought I'd show you some great interceptions. That's a pretty amazing one. It goes off his foot. Oh my gosh, that's nice. An intercept in uh, math is a little bit like an intercept in football. It's where one thing crosses another. Well, before we're done today, you're going to understand what intercept means because we're going to talk about equations in the slope-intercept form. Here's, an, here's the basic format for an equation in slope-intercept form, and it's got a couple of elements that you're familiar with. It's got two variables, x and y, and that sure sounds like the axis on a traditional coordinate plane, and it is. x and y plus two other little symbols there, m, and we've been talking about m, that's slope, that's the amount of rise over the amount of run. But it's also got a b in there, which you haven't seen, or, or maybe you haven't seen, and that's called the y-intercept. What's that sound like it means? The y-intercept. Y-intercept. I wonder what that means. Oh my goodness, I'm going to show you. The y-intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis. It's where it intercepts the y-axis. This line hits the y-axis right there at positive 5. So the, so the intercept is b equals positive 5. Now you know what slope means. Slope means rise over run. This line's rise. It goes up 1, 2 in a positive direction and then goes 1, 2, 3, 4 towards the negative numbers in a negative direction. So the slope is plus 2 over minus 4 or minus 2 over 4 or minus 1 over 2. Well now we know what the slope is, minus 1 half, and we know what the intercept is, 5, positive 5. So could we create an equation that represents that line? Yeah, we could. And it looks something like this. Y equals the slope, which we figured over here was minus one-half times x plus the y-intercept, 5. So y equals minus one-half x plus 5 is the equation that's represented by that line on the coordinate plane. Well, that seems, that just doesn't seem real. It just, it, it baffles me that that works. So let's test it. Let's create a table again. And let's make that table uh, show us what X and Y are. I'm going to arbitrarily pick a bunch of X's, 1 through 6. And then I'm going to figure out what Y equals for each of those X's. Because Y equals minus 1 half X plus 5. Well, if X is 1, then minus one half one is minus one half, and y would equal minus one half plus five, or four and a half. And if x were two, and I substituted that two for the x, I got minus one half times two is minus one, plus five is four. And trust me, the rest of those I think I figured out correctly as well. Well, does it work? Well, let's try. I got an x of 1, and, and this equation says that y is 4 and a half. So let's go over to 1, and let's go up 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. Well, we hit the line. Amazing. Let's try this one, 2 and 4. 
one, two, and then we go up one, two, three, four, and we hit the line. Just to show I'm not fooling around, let's try this. Six and two. We go out to six, and we go up two, and we hit the line. Amazing. Well, we just had a line, and we figured out the, the equation that that line represented. We found out the slope of the line, and then we found out the interception, intercept of the line, the y-intercept, and then we figured out what the equation for that line would be. And that wasn't that hard. Well, what if they gave you an equation and told you to find the line? Could you do that? Sure you could. Remember, there's two bits of information in there that we've got to we've got to figure out or that they've told us one is that the slope is two and the other is that the y-intercept is three and we can get two points from that information and figure out what the uh, uh, the lines gonna look like let's do it first they've told me that the intercept is minus three remember that's that last little thing there it says plus B but if it's a minus number there then it has to be minus 3 is the intercept because we changed the positive to a negative so B had to be a negative number so let's go down and mark where that Y intercept is it's right there and I put a little purple dot there it's minus 3 well we got one point and we've got some more information we know that the slope is 2 well, could we find another point if we knew that the slope is 2? What's 2 mean? 2 means the rise over the run. So, it, like, if I had positive 2 over positive 1, that would be a positive 2 slope. So, if we start at our original point, the y-intercept, which is right there in the purple, we know we've got a slope of 2. It's going to rise positive 2, and it's going to run positive 1. So let's try that. It rises positive 2 and it runs positive 1. And we got another point right there where I've got the red dot. Well now we've got two points. Can we create a line? Sure we can. All we have to do is draw a line through those two points and that's the line that represents the equation y equals 2x minus 3. I always thought that was pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed it. And what we did was take an equation that was in the slope-intercept uh, form where we had the slope and the intercept, and with it in that form, we could create a line that represented that. Well, what if they gave us an equation that wasn't in slope-intercept form? What if they gave us an equation like that? That's not in the slope-intercept form. I've got to have the y isolated on the left, and then I've got to have the, the x variable on the right, and then I've got to have a number in front of the x that represents the slope, and I've got to have an intercept, and that's not what I got there. And uh, what, what am I going to do? Well, there is a solution to this problem. All we have to do is manipulate this equation so it's in the slope-intercept form. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, by now, you ought to be good enough in algebra to be able to manipulate that equation and isolate the y on the left side. So let's do that. First of all, I've got to get rid of the 6x on this side because I've got to have just a y on the left side. So if I've got a, a plus 6x and I want to get rid of it, I'm going to subtract 6x. And I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides of the equation. And on the left side of the equation, the 6x's cancel each other out and leave just 3y. And on the right side of the equation, I've got 15 minus 6x. Well, now I got 3y on here. I need to get rid of that 3. How am I going to do that? Well, if I want to get rid of a times 3, I'm going to divide by 3. And if I divide the left side of the equation by 3, I'm going to divide the right side of the equation by 3. And I've got to divide the entire right side of the equation by 3, not just one of the elements of it. There's two elements on the right side of the equation. It was 15 minus 6x. 15 minus 6x. Well, I can't just divide the 15 or just divide the 6 
by 3. I got to divide both of them by 3. So I put that in brackets. Now, if I divide 3y by 3, I get just y. And if, divide, if I divide 15, at 15 minus 6x by 3, I divide the 15 by 3 and get 5. I divide the minus 6x by 3 and get minus 2x. So now my, my formula, my equation, reads y equals 5 minus 2x. Doesn't that look like the slope-intercept form? y equals slope times x plus the y-intercept? Slope, y-intercept. I bet we could graph that now. And that's what we did. First thing we do is mark where the y-intercept is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we got a slope of minus 2. So that means like uh, it goes up 2 and over 1, or it goes up 4 and over 1. Well, I went up 4. Positive 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 2, 1, 2. That's 4 over minus 2, which would be minus 2. Now, I've got two points. And all I got to do is draw a line that connects them. And I've got the line that represents this kind of bizarre equation 6x plus 3y equals 15. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. All right, graph y equals 2x plus 4. Well, we're, we're lucky this time because it's in slope-intercept form. I've got y equals 2, which is the slope, x times x, plus 4, which would be the intercept. So let's mark where the intercept is first. And it's at positive 4. So I go up and I put a dot at positive 4. Now I need to find another point, and I'm going to use the slope to help me find that other point. And the slope is 2, or positive 2 over positive 1. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, a rise of 2, positive, and then a run of 1, positive. And I create another point. Now that I get two points, I can draw a line between them. And that line represents y equals 2x plus 4. Graph 2y minus x equals 12. Well, the first thing I got to do is change that from the format it's in to slope intercept format. And I won't go through all the algebra. I hope you know how to do that, or I'll go through it quickly. First, I got to get rid of that minus x, so I'm going to add an x to both sides of the equation. Then I'm going to get rid of that 2, so I got to divide both sides of the equation by 2. Now I've got y equals 6 plus 1 half x and I'm going to change those two positions so it's in the, the slope intercept format. I've got y equals 1 half x plus 6. I wouldn't have to. I mean I'd know that was the slope whether it was there or there and I'd know that was the intercept whether it was there or there. But it's probably a little easier to see it that way. Now let's graph it. I know my intercept is plus 6 so I go up and put a dot at plus 6. And then I know my slope is 1 over 2. A rise of 1, positive. A run of 2, positive. So I go up a rise of 1 and a run of 2, and I put a second dot there. And then I'm done. I just draw a line that connects those two dots, and that's the line for the equation 2y minus x equals 12. That wasn't so hard, was it? Now I think you probably understand how to graph a linear equation in slope-intercept form and how to convert a conventional form equation into slope-intercept form. Well, let's just find out how well you understand that. Go to www.mastermath.info and download and print the graphing linear equations in slope-intercept form and test your skills. After you finish that, go back to www.mastermath.info and on the same page, take the quiz 
that uh, test your skills in graphing linear equations in slope-intercept form. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and I hope we see you real soon.